Hello everyone, back to today's first video in JMA Friday for today's first video. So this is the first JMA Friday of 2020. And it's going to be pretty much a January look at. It's going to take us more or less to the end of January. So uh, we'll see what Japanese and CFS VTMRs have to say about January. Um, for this first video, and then later on we're going to have a week 10 day video update. If you're waiting for the GavsWeatherViz.com January forecast, that will be released first video up tomorrow. And things are getting back to normal now after the Christmas uh, wind down. So, um, also tomorrow we have weekend forecast, have a week's 10 day video update. And then on Sunday, we're going to begin the countdown to spring. So, spring updates will begin uh, on uh, Sunday. Have some analogs for you on uh, Sunday. So, all of that kind of long range stuff is beginning to crank up again. Gaz Webby's Sunday Roundup is coming back on Sunday too. We may do Ensembles Watch Sunday evening. I know one or two of you are waiting uh, for Ensembles Watch, so that could be back Sunday evening. Yes, after the Christmas wind down and generally acquired to December to recover from both the flu and also uh, the winter updates. Things are starting to crank up again uh, now in terms of the output. So lots of videos coming up your way uh, this weekend. And starting it, all, starting it all off is uh, JMA Friday. So let's get on with that. We're going to begin with the 500 Bilobar height anomalies. Broken down into weekly pairs from the JMA, uh, from the North Pole and Arctic view down. So the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere is just there, and then the middle latitudes are around there. Uh, these are broken down to weekly periods, so the first week pair will take us from today, the 3rd through to the 10th of January. Blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange and red extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. So week one, uh, 500 millibar heights, normally taking us from the 3rd to the 10th of January, looks like this. Lots of low pressure up to the north of the country. Deep low pressure around Greenland, Iceland, and cold temperatures up there too, of course. Uh, fueling those areas of low pressure. Above average heights, high pressure centred over and to the south of the country. A strong jet stream coming across the Atlantic, but mainly... A little bit to the north, so it implies the most unsettled conditions would be across the northern parts of the country. The driest conditions would be in the south and the southeast of the country, and all areas with those winds in from the west and southwest would be mild. And then we go through to week two, which takes us from the 10th to the 17th of January. So below average heights again in the north or to the north and the west of the country with low pressure around Greenland and Iceland coming down into the North Atlantic. Above average heights centred over and just a little bit to the east of the country. That's quite a big area of high pressure centred over and just slightly to be just somewhere around Denmark or perhaps western parts of Germany. The flow of the jet goes something like that. So we're still on the mild side of the jet. The only thing with this is that we may just be starting to pull up some slightly cooler air from off the continent. The exact origins of the air is critical uh, in this kind of situation. If the air is coming in kind of like east, southeast of the continent, then it could be quite cold, actually, quite frosty. Uh, however, if the air is sort of south-southwest, or the origins of the air sort of south-southwest, doing something like that, then that could be very mild, actually. So, exact origins of the air, all important. It does suggest quite a lot of dry weather, though, especially for southern and eastern parts of the country. And then week three and four gets us from the 17th to the 31st of January. So more or less to the end of the month, in fact, to the end of the month. Uh, and we have above average heights, a large area of high pressure then centred over the top of the UK. Low pressure is up towards Greenland and out into the North Atlantic. This is a very dry signal for January overall. This is a dry January signal with high pressure well and truly in control. Now that position of the high pressure has gradually moved and now it's centred over the top of the country. So despite the fact that we're on the mild side of the jet stream, it will probably be quite cold under that region. Model, we'll have a look at temperature anomalies in a moment. I'm sure the model will say 
are relatively mild, but under under that high pressure in the middle of winter, this is the last week of January, uh, I think it would probably be cold and there would be a chance of frost and fog. Not snow, there's no precipitation around and the upper air temperatures themselves would probably be relatively mild, but down on the surface we would likely be getting an inversion and uh, that would give us quite cold, frosty, but also dry conditions. And the main takeaway from what the JMA is showing today is a lot of dry weather coming up this January after the deluge that we had from uh, from September through to December, of course. Uh, this is a tropical and mid-latitude view. So the UK and Ireland in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it on this view. Uh, so week one, 500 millibar height anomaly, which is the 3rd to the 10th of January, has the above average heights to the south, the below average heights to the north and northwest. We bring in the wind from the west southwesterly direction. It looks mild. Uh, most of the set of conditions in the north and west, the driest conditions would be in the south. Let's confirm that with the temperature anomaly. So that is indeed above average, quite significantly so, around 2 to 3 degrees above average there on the temperature scale. Notice very mild or even quite warm in terms of the anomaly to average anyway for most parts of Europe and also interestingly across much of North America as well. So both sides of the Atlantic looking uh, very mild for this first full week of January. Precipitation anomaly is north-south split, so northern and western parts of the country are a little bit wetter than average, southern and eastern parts of the country a little bit drier on average. You can see where the jet stream is, the jet stream is running through there quite clearly. Uh, week 2, uh, 500 millibar height anomaly is the 10th to the 17th of January. This time we build up the ridge very close to the country and slightly to our east. Temperature anomalies are still milder than average. I suspect at this point it's all important where the wind direction is coming from. If the uh, wind direction is southeast, it could start to get a little bit colder with that continental air. If it's south southwest, then it will be another very mild week. Overall, the model is forecasting uh, above average temperatures. Again, most parts of uh, America, very mild. Most parts of Europe, very mild as well. Turning really cold across Canada, though, much colder. Uh, uh, up to the north of, uh, of the United States. And it's going drier as well, so precipitation on this previous middle part of January also looking uh, drier than average too. And then finally, uh, weeks three and four, that's got wrong actually, I think. So let's just quickly move that over to the third and fourth week. Uh, there we go, which is days 17 to 30. Uh, so what we see there is that the high pressure becomes centred over top of the UK itself. There it is, high pressure right over top of us. Low pressure is still out to the northwest. We can't see Greenland and Iceland on this view, but we know what's going on. Low pressure is in that position. The model is still forecasting above average temperatures, which I am dubious about, given it's going for an area of high pressure to be centred over the top of uh, the UK and Ireland for this two-weekly period. It could be transitional, so it could be something like have a very mild third week and then it becomes drier, colder, uh, with frost and fog in the fourth week, something like that. But overall, I would suspect that to be rather cool about week uh, three, four temperature anomaly. The model is probably looking at the upper air temperatures, which will, I would assume, as it's a relatively warm ridge, uh, the upper air temperatures will probably be on the mild side. But down on the surface, I think under that high pressure, it would rapidly start to turn cold from frost and fog. And the model can't really see that. These models can't really see surface level cold. They're looking at the upper air parameters really and uh, going from there so i think that would be a little bit colder if that high pressure was to become centered big if of course it may not do but if the high pressure was to become centered right over top of the uk then i think we would rapidly start to cool down with frost and fog uh it's looking may dry as well far northwest scotland on the wetter than average side but most parts of the country actually again drier than average so this is a very dry january being forecast by the jma Let's have a look at Service V2, see how that compares. So again, these are 500 millibar heights, and they're broken down into weekly bids. The first week bid takes us from the 3rd to the 9th of January. The coming week is dominated by high pressure, generally a little bit to our south, low pressure 
is up to the north. The jet stream is pushed northwards uh, like that as well. So a lot of dry weather on offer through the course of this week. And you would have thought pretty mild too. Uh, week two is going to be the 10th to the 16th of January with high pressure this time centred kind of like over the low countries and uh, northeastern parts of France. Low pressure again towards Greenland, Iceland and the North Atlantic. The jet stream is doing something a little bit like that. This is a cold signal for southeastern Europe, by the way. I think the cold air is already digging into places like Greece and Turkey. And uh, this could be quite a cold month, actually. Or certainly the first half of January could be quite cold a wind tree in that southeastern corner of Europe. So I know this drives uh, cold and snow lovers in the UK absolutely crazy when they see um, pictures of, uh, or they see footage of snow piling up uh, in uh, in Greece and uh, on the streets of Athens and sometimes occasionally even in the Greek islands. We may get a little bit of that actually um, in the next couple of weeks. So cold snow lovers who are watching this in the UK, brace yourself. We may get a little bit of that in uh, the next week or two. For us, we're close to this ridge of high pressure. It's centred over sort of the low countries. I think again we will be bringing up the winds from a south southwest direction. It will be mostly uh, mild with that and then we go through to week three uh, which is the 17th to 23rd of January if anything the ridge is strengthening it's moving up towards Scandinavia interestingly so this is a very very uh, difficult pattern to forecast for low pressures out in the middle of the Atlantic on face value it's probably still very mild with winds from the south but because that high pressure is pushing just that little bit further northwards, uh, we could be starting to draw the wind in from like a southeasterly direction. South, southwest to south, southeast is a big difference, although it's only a very slight, um, subtle change in wind direction. At this time of year, it will make a big difference. That could be starting to go more towards frosty conditions. Again, very dry, high pressure is in control of this. So this is a really dry January coming up, if this is right. But possibly the second half of the month just begins to go a little bit uh, cooler. And then we go through to week four, and this is quite clearly now a, a cooler scenario. This is the 24th of January to the 30th. The high pressure now is firmly centred over Scandinavia. So through the month, it gradually inches itself further and further north. And now there's no doubt about it. We would be bringing in uh, a southeasterly, possibly even easterly wind. I suppose the issue is that because it's been so mild, there wouldn't be much cold air on the continent. But nevertheless, the continental landmass will rapidly turn colder through this uh, time of the year. And so, at the very least, we would be bringing in low-level surface cold off the continent here, and we would have an increasing risk of frost. And you wouldn't totally rule out the chance if the upper air temperatures become cold enough of some wintry showers or some snow flurries on the east coast. That's definitely looking colder there. But it's four weeks away. It's the last week of January. So, um, big health warning about that, of course. But it does eventually get that high pressure up to Scandinavia in the last week of the month. Look at these temperature anomalies for week one. This is the 3rd to the 9th of January. And yes, you can quite clearly see it's substantially mild of an average for the UK. And for Ireland on the temperature scale, we're up to 3 degrees or perhaps more above average. And again, look how mild it is across most parts of Europe and also most parts of uh, Russia as well. It is cold of an average down Towards Greece, however, and also Turkey, it's very mild over on the eastern side of America too. So it's looking really mild for the coming week. And then week two, no changes really. This is the 10th to the 16th of January. That one also significantly milder than average. Very mild across east parts of America. Getting colder in line with what the JMA was showing. Getting colder across Canada and also western, northwestern parts of the states, uh, however. Week 3 is going a little bit closer to average, so it is cooling down, 17th to 23rd of January. Overall, still a little bit on mild of an average side, but it is getting uh, a bit cooler compared to what it is through the first half of January. Again, very mild on the eastern side of America, but much of Canada and also most of northern Western America absolutely plunged into a freezer at this point, around 4 degrees 
um, below average. So winter really getting quite severe across Canada and northwestern parts of America in the second half of January. And then we go through to week four, which is the last week of the month, of course. This would be 24th to the 30th of January. Overall, it's still a little bit on the mind of an average side for the UK and for Ireland, but gradually, 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 it is starting to see, we are starting to see the temperatures lowering, almost going slightly cooler on average across central parts of Europe there. Also becoming much colder across many parts of America at this point. That cold air from Canada is spilling down into the United States, even eastern parts of the states, which have been very mild at this point, going cooler. So there could be some sort of quite significant and fairly fundamental pattern change going on there in the last week of January, with both sides of the Atlantic potentially starting to become uh, quite a bit colder. But um, again, this is four weeks away. It's the most extended part of this update, and it does come with a big health warning. Precipitation on is finally, so week one, with CLSV 2 third to the 9th of January, driving average through southern parts of the UK and to our south, a little bit west average up to the north and the west. That is in line with what the JMA model was showing. Most places go driving average in week two. This is the 10th of the 16th of January, driving average in most parts of the UK and many parts of Europe as well. Week 3 also hints at being rather drier than average. This is the 17th, 23rd of January on the drier than average side. And then week 4, we're losing the signal uh, now. So we're getting closer to average. At this point, remember, the high pressure is starting to centre itself over Scandinavia. So um, we will start to become more at risk of low pressure with the jet stream coming in more towards the south. In fact, you can see through the Atlantic just here where the jet stream is. The jet stream is shifting southward. So the jet stream track uh, in week four is kind of like going to there. Uh, and that's in line as the Scandinavian highs building up to our northeast, of course. Compare that with uh, where the jet stream track is in week one. Which is the third to the ninth January. You don't normally go this in depth, but I'll probably just show you this. Jet stream track is through there in week one so definitely from week one to week four the uh jet stream is coming southwards with the low pressures moving southwards as well as the high pressure becomes centered to the northeast then of course with the jet stream uh we are at risk of low pressure coming in to the south of us and if it's cold enough that does provide potentially a little bit of uh wintry potential for the last week of january as well so it looks like uh, the clear trend is towards a dry January. So uh, lots of high pressure influences. We should come away with our first dry and average month for quite some time if this is right. Very mild, especially in the first half of the month. They're gradually cooling down, potentially, just potentially, uh, a cold week for the last week of the month. But that's four weeks away. It's a very long way off. Right, so that's it for the first JMA Friday of the year. We'll be back later on with your week's 10-day video updates, so come back for that then. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.